Hi guys, so today I'm going to discuss the solutions of this uh, Codagon by Trilogy Innovations or Codenation. Uh, this was a hiring challenge uh, by Code Codagon by by Codenation. Uh, this that was that's called Codagon. It was held on interview bit, and there were six problems there. And this is usually considered, uh, I think, according to me, this is the hardest uh, uh, challenge, hardest hiring challenge of all companies. Uh, Codenation is famous for uh, having these hard tests. So if we go by uh cf ratings of these problems the uh, difficulty of order of the problems is like uh, fifth and fourth are kind of equal and then one then two and three are kind of equal and then six and the cf ratings are uh, the easiest two problems are around 1500 i guess and then uh, this one is around 1800 and these are in somewhere in the 2000 2100 range and finally the last one is probably above 2300 i i can't i can't really estimate the exact difficulty of this but yeah so these are the things but one thing i would like to say is that most of the problems like all of these problems in fact are uh, like none of these problems are actually unique right so not original like they are all um, kind of taken up from somewhere or they are, the ideas required to solve these problems are too standard so that's why you would not expect them in a real contest and maybe it uh, does happen to appear in a real contest a lot of people would be able to do it like i was able to do a lot of these problems very easily because i have done a lot of similar problems earlier so these are not really very original problems but uh, regardless they were very interesting and uh, they are very hard by the way so if any beginner kind of person is watching this video uh, don't get disheartened because uh, this is literally the hardest uh, hiring challenge that is there so uh, if you can't do this one i think that's fine okay so let's talk about the solutions one by one So I'll discuss the solution in this order only five, four, one, two, three, six. So let's start with the fifth one, and this one is not too tough, but it's not too easy either. Um, the fifth one. Let me scroll to that one. Yeah. Okay. So this is the fifth problem in which you are basically given a matrix of size n cross m filled with ones. So there are all ones everywhere, and you need to change the matrix in such a way that uh, the sum of all the cells in each column is zero. and to do this you can change the uh, you can change any amount of cells and change the value from 1 to minus 1 in that cell and you want to return the number of ways modulo 10 to 1 into 7 so this is a problem and obviously for this you need to know the uh, basic math kind of thing and uh, for that you can maybe like watch my math video so i'll put it in the pinned comment you can check that out uh, that will help you with the uh, uh, modular arithmetic and things like that but the problem is basically like uh, so you have a matrix like this okay so you have a matrix like this and there are n rows and m columns so n rows like this and m columns like this and what you want to do is in every like in every place there is a one everywhere so what you want to do is you can convert some of these ones to minus ones uh, you can choose any number of ones and convert them into minus ones and in each of the columns you want the total sum to be zero right so uh so the reason i said that this is not very difficult because uh, the first observation is kind of simple that if n is odd it is impossible so if let's say there are three uh, only three rows so obviously it is impossible you cannot add one and subtract one three times so you get a zero so it's obviously impossible so n must be even so n must be even if n is odd then the answer is zero so we can solve if n is even so when the n is even Uh, what we can do is we want uh, to like we won't touch n by 2 of these and uh, the remaining n by 2 we will put minus 1 there right so any of these uh, n cells you we can pick any of the n by 2 out of these and put minus 1 there then the sum would be zero so if there was only uh, one column then what would be the answer so the answer would be n choose n by 2 right so the answer would be n choose n by 2 because uh, we have n cells and we want to choose n by 2 out of them and then um, then we get the uh, sum as zero so like that but since we have like a lot of columns we have m columns so all of these are independent because we don't have to do anything in a row we only have to do everything in the columns one by one so since all of the uh, all of the columns are independent we can just multiply the answer for all of them so basically this thing we have to multiply it and m times so if we multiply it m times we will just raise this to the power of m so our answer is uh, like this is our exact answer that's what we have to calculate we just have to calculate and choose n by 2 to power m 
So, uh, and we have to do this modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So if you have seen my math video, or if you have, haven't seen it, you should go and check it out. In, in that, I have told you about how you can uh, do the uh, binomial coefficient. So how you can find nc n by 2. And I have told you how you can um, do uh, this in modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. I have told you how to find a number to power some other number using binary exponentiation. So I have taught all that. You can check that out. And uh, uh, so this wasn't very difficult to come up with. So I I think this is around 1500 rating just because of the modular arithmetic and a little bit combinatorics. So the next problem that I'm going to discuss is the problem four, I guess. Yeah, four wasn't, uh, yeah, four also wasn't very tough, but uh, still I think 15, 1600 rating I would give it. So you have a knapsack. So knapsack basically means a bag, like a backpack. Okay, so you have a backpack of infinite size. So the size, in, the size is infinite. You have n objects and each object has its own weight and profit. So uh, if you know about the DP knapsack, you would know what they're talking about. Uh, but anyway, let's just say that every item has some uh, weight and some price. So you want to collect like the objects in such a way that your total price is the maximum. So there is one drawback that it is made of cheap and raw materials. So if the so there is an A that is fixed. So there's a fixed A. And if the object with the weight W is put into the bag, then there will be a whole of size W minus A. And then all the objects with the weight uh, less than W minus, uh, less than this value, like if the whole is of size L, then the ob all the objects which are smaller than that, uh, they will fall out. They will fall out and uh, you will uh, have only the objects that are bigger than that. So what is the maximum profit that you can get? So this is something like you have like a bag and in this, there's a, there's a value, right? So there's a value, let's say 100. If you put anything that is bigger than 100, like let's say if you put 105 here, then everything till 5 or less will fall down, right? So 5 or less will fall down, I guess. Yeah. So that means you can only have the objects in the range uh, 6 to 105. So the objects with the range 6 to 105, you can have all of those objects because there is no uh, limit on the size of the bag. So that means any object that has its size between 6 to 105, you can have all such objects and you can just add the profits of them and you can uh, get the answer there. And so how do we know we have to start from six? What if we start from like nine and then go up till uh, 108, right? So what if we start from nine and go up till 108, okay? So even that could be one of the answers, like that could be one of the possible answers. But uh, so what we can do is we can, choose every starting weight because uh, you can see that the uh, weight of the objects is not more than 10,000. So what we can do is we can iterate on this value. So basically if we choose the uh, X and then the other thing will be X plus A minus one basically. So we can iterate on X from one till your 10,000 or maybe 10,000 minus A or something. So till that point you can iterate on all the X and then uh, you will get this weight range and you want the sum of all the objects that lie within this weight range and uh, that is your total maximum profit. So how do you get the total in this range? So for this you can use prefix sum which is a well-known technique. So uh, using that you can do it because the size of the array will not be too big. It's just 10,000. So you can have a array of 10,000 size. Uh, in that you can put the profit corresponding to the weight. You can keep adding it and just perform the prefix sum and then using this uh, prefix sum you can get the uh, sum in this range and you want to find the maximum value for all the x's. So that was that and the next problem that I'm going to take up is the first problem. Okay, So now there is a significant jump in difficulty. You need to know uh, things about trees and uh, that kind of things. right? So in this basically you are uh, given a tree and uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the simplified problem statement. It, it is something like you are basically given a tree and uh, there's a number on each of the nodes, basically the index, I guess, the index of the nodes, right? Mm, yeah. So there's the index of the nodes, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. right? So uh, this, this way, there's the index of the nodes and there's some jealousy kind of thing. So basically, if a higher node has uh, in his subtree, there is, another uh, city with index greater. So basically you can see that here it is one, uh, either here the value is one, but the uh, the values in the subtree are actually greater. So like 
this will be jealous of this this will be jealous of this and so on so basically we want to count in total how many pairs of jealousy will be there so for example we want to count the number of pairs such that a smaller value is an ancestor of a bigger value like here we are getting smaller value bigger ancestor of bigger smaller value ancestor of bigger here also here also then uh, again here right so basically you can see for this six how many uh, of how many people is this going to be jealous so below this six we want all the bigger values so this 7 8 9 10 10 all of them are bigger so here the jealousy will be four then here the jealousy will be two here also two here it will be zero and so on so you ha you have to add all of this and four plus two plus two you will get eight so basically something like this you have to do so there are uh, two or three ways to do this like actually there are multiple ways to do this um so i'll talk about two of those uh, i'll talk about two of the ways so th the first way is to just do what the question asks you to do right so it it, it is the worst solution right so the next solution that i'll tell will be a better solution I'm telling you already but yeah so it's just about doing what they are asking you to do so for each node just check how many people uh, it is jealous of so like for this six i'll try to find how many people it is jealous of and so on so for that we will use a technique called euler tour if you don't know about it uh, don't worry much but uh, because the next solution would didn't use this but yeah so we will use a thing called euler tour in which uh, all the subtrees are actually converted into a range so then it will convert every subtree into a range in an array for example this subtree will be the entire array then this subtree will be a small range in this and so on right so we can we just adjust this adjust these in order such that um every subtree is a range so basically now the question converts to in a range you have to find how many values are let's say bigger than 2 or bigger than 5 or something so to do this you, on this array you need to have a data structure like a fenwick tree or a segment tree or something so you need to have like a fenwick or binary index tree or something on this range and then you will do it in a uh, offline query kind of thing so first of all you'll pick one and put one there uh, initially like everywhere we have zero here so first you pick one and then you put one at that place and then you put one at in two's place and in three's place and so on and this fenwick will give you the range sum uh, okay so this is like this is like a not a very clean solution right so let's talk about the good solution the good solution is we reverse the problem so instead of finding how many people one will be jealous of let's find how many people will be jealous of one right so how many people will be jealous of one this six will be jealous of one uh, sorry no six won't be jealous of one like nobody is jealous of one but uh, we we can start off with some other vertex like for this so how many people will be jealous of this eight so this two will be jealous of eight and this six will also be jealous of eight right so instead of counting uh um, like we were counting the reverse thing instead of counting uh, how many uh, people will be jealous of one we are counting how many people will be uh, how many people are jealous of 7 or 8 or 9 or anything right so that's what we're trying to count and if we add all of them that will be the same right because uh, the total number of pairs are same that way uh, if you count like you're getting my point right if if i'm giving it if i'm giving something to someone and if i count the total number of givings or if i count the total number of receivings is this is the same total sum right so that's what i'm trying to do here so instead of finding um instead of finding bigger values in the subtree i will find smaller value in the ancestors right so i want to find so now the problem becomes something simpler it's like for this vertex i want to count the number of parents which have value less than 7 so for this vertex i want to count the number of uh, vertices with value less than 7 so the good thing is we can just do a dfs from the root and uh, the dfs will be like in this order getting my point right so the good thing about this dfs is as we enter a node we will put this value into some set right so we put this value into some set then when we enter this we put this value into that set when we enter this we put this value into that set and when we leave it we remove it from the set right so that's what we're doing it we whenever we enter the node we put it into the set whenever we leave it we remove it from the set so what happens because of this is that whenever you are at a particular node during the dfs all of its parents are in the set and nothing else is present in the set right so you have like a set and all of the parents are present inside the set and all of the 
a non parent are not present inside the set so now all you have to do is you just have to check whether in this set how many numbers are smaller than 7 right so you want to check how many numbers in this set are smaller than 7 and if you know stl you would know that a set does not support that right so a set cannot tell you how many elements are smaller than 7 I'm not going to write it right so a set cannot tell you how many elements are smaller than 7 or 9 or anything uh, it cannot do that so for that we use a different data structure that is present only in c++ and the reason why c++ is the best language for competitive programming so in c++ we have a thing called ordered set or some people call it indexed set and uh, the usage it is a little uh, it is only a little complex right it's not too complex it's only a little complex and it gives you an extra function it works exactly like a set so all the functionality is exactly like set but uh, it gives you one extra like basically two extra functions which can help you find how many numbers are smaller than um, uh, seven in this uh, in in the set right so i'll put the link in the description you can read in a blog about uh, the ordered set and then uh, using the ordered set you can solve this very easily If you don't want to use an ordered set, instead of making this a set, you can make this a Fenwick if you know what it is. So if you know what a Fenwick is, you can just have a Fenwick like this and put one in the place of six, put one in the place of two, then put zero again and so on. So yeah, so that you can do that. This one is the cleaner solution. Okay, so now let's move on to the next problem. Next problem, I think after one, I was going to take uh, three or two. Okay, ah uh, two, eight. to okay right so again the statement uh, i'll have to read it once again i guess so you are given an array of size n and then what they do is they uh, take any index greater than 1 and remove the some positive value from some index and transfer it to a smaller index and the person who is not able to perform any moves will lose okay so basically it is something like you are given an array and in each element of the array there are some values like 6 2 5 7 0 uh, yeah 0 can also be there and 9 something like this so each move will be you pick any uh, element in this range you cannot pick the first element you can pick any element in this range and then you can pick any value that is smaller or equal to this value right but non negative and then you can transfer some of it to the uh, to the left right so like if this is uh, this is 5 right so you, you can do it something like instead of this 5 you put a 3 here and the remaining 2 you can send it here and make this a 4 right so basically like minus 2 here plus 2 here something like this you can do and you can do it anywhere like minus 6 here plus 6 here this kind of thing you can do at any index and what will happen is after some time all of this value will come here all of this value will come here this will come here this will come here this will come here and this will have the sum of everything and everything else will be zero and then nobody can move and whichever player reaches this point uh, he'll be the loser so you have to tell which person will be the loser but this is not all so we, uh, so in this question you are actually given queries so you're not given the entire array you're given queries and in each query you will be given a sub array from this and you have to tell who will win if the if they play on this sub array and even that's not all they are also giving you this uh, this update operation in which you have to do a bitwise or of all the elements with some other value so they will give you like i mean it's it's a bit unnecessary like they are overkilling the problem but still so they will give you like a sub array and on this sub array you want to basically sort every element with some value let's say uh, you have to sort with four so all the elements this two will become two or four this will become 5s or 4 this will become 7s or 4 and so on so all of these will be changed like this and you have to solve for the uh, for each sub array you have to tell if, whether the first player will win or whether the second player will win right 1 or 0 you have to return on the, on the basis of that whether 1 uh, if kunj will win or 0 if rishabh will win so that's what you want to do so how do we approach this so first observation here is that i think the first observation is a bit simple so it's that uh, like not very simple but still so it that you can see that uh, we do not care about what value is here and uh, similarly we do not care about what value is here so why don't we care about the value here it's because let's say 
the that the first person wins right so let's say for this configuration the first person wins so i am saying that it does not matter what the values in these indices are so even if they were zero he would still win so let me prove this claim so it's because let's say let's say let's assume that the first player will win if the array looked something like this uh, 0 2 0 7 0 9 okay basically all of these values are zero so let's say let's just assume that the first person wins if the array was like this but now the array is like this so maybe the solution changes right maybe the uh, maybe the maybe now the second player can win so i'm going to prove that that won't happen and this won't happen because i will as as a first player i will play identically on both of these arrays i will do the same things on both of these arrays but um, the second player might do something different the second player has more moves now like he can transfer some of this 5 to uh, this place right like he can do minus 3 plus 3 something like this right so he can, he can he can do some more moves which he couldn't do uh, on this array so what i will do is i will cancel each of his move basically if he does plus minus 3 plus 3 i will do minus 3 plus 3 uh, in the in the in the next in the previous place and basically is the same thing because he did one move i did one move it gets cancelled no advantage right so basically these arrays are the same it does not matter what is there in the uh, in these even indices only the odd indices matter basically that's what i have proved briefly you, you can try to convince yourself more by proving it again but yeah so the uh, even indices do not matter so let's just erase them okay so this does not matter this does not matter this does not matter okay so once you have done this now let's see what the change in odd index will look like so if you do like minus 1 plus 1 here right but we don't care about this right so why do we write plus 1 here we don't care about this it is just minus 1 here so now the moves are just pick the elements in on the odd indices and decrease them by some value these are the moves just just pick any element in the odd index and decrease it by some value that's the that's the only move right that's the only move that you can do now this problem reduces to a classical game theory problem that is called the nim game okay so this is the nim game in which it's like you are given n stacks of stones and in each stack there is there are a0 stones a1 stones a2 stones dot dot, dot a n minus 1 stones right so you have stones like this and uh, basically you can just remove any number of stones from any stack and the initial player wins if the zor of all these numbers is non zero so if it is non zero then the first person wins and you can read about it if you read more about nim i will link uh, the cp algorithm article in the description you can um, you can read that but uh, yeah so this is the this is the main idea and uh, that's what you want to do so in this problem how will we apply it we want the zor of all the odd indices to be zero so the zor of all these three elements should be zero so if it is zero then um, so if it is zero then that means the first person will lose and if it is non zero then the first person will win so that's all we have to do that's all the problem has been reduced to so you basically you can uh, now you can do it using some fenwick tree and uh, like you need two fenwick trees one for the odd ranges fenwick or segment tree one for the odd ranges one for the uh, even ranges one for the odd indices and one for the even indices and uh, yeah basically and then you can do these type of updates as well so this shouldn't be too hard if you know pretty much like if you know about pen victories and segment trees properly you will be able to do it uh, if you know either one of those two you can do that so yeah that was second problem and i think it's not wrong to say that this was hard and this was easily 2000 or above rating yeah then let's take the problem 3 Okay, so problem three again has uh, two solutions. My solution was uh, small to large. I mean, I didn't attempt the test, but I think uh, small to large. Uh, I thought of the uh, small to large solution when I saw the test. Um, there's another solution that uses um, centroid decomposition. I think that would be too complex, so I'm not going to explain that one. But yeah, this can be done using centroid decomposition. If you know that, you can try to do it in that way as well. 
so i'm going to tell this solution using small to large and yeah so basically in this problem we are given a tree of n nodes and uh, basically a tree is given and for uh, each path the value of the path the value of the path is the uh, product of values of all the elements on that path and then we are also given a prime number and it's modulo that prime number so that is modular arithmetic so you probably already know that if you are seeing this solution and we want the number of paths where the this value is equal to d right so that's what we want to do here we want the number of paths such that this value is equal to d so we'll be using a technique called small small to large and uh, this is also called uh, dsu on tree or it is also called sac it's called sac you can read about it i'll put the link in the description these are all same things sac dsu on tree or it is also called the small to large technique okay so this is a prerequisite uh, for this problem but yeah so the problem is like uh, the problem is actually very simple to understand you are given a tree and you just have to count the number of paths such that the product of all the elements on the path mod c is equal to d so yeah, that's all we have to do here so let's see how i will be doing it using using the sac thing okay so basically sac thing is like uh, you can have all the elements in a subtree into a single set and then uh, actually actually you cannot really black box it you need to understand it probably to solve this problem right so i'm just going to assume that you have at least some knowledge about this uh, sac concept but yeah this is not a binary tree or a ternary tree i don't know i don't know what i'm trying trying yeah so you have a tree like this and uh, basically what you want to do is uh, let's say you are at this node so basically for each node we will store the product from root till that node right so that is a pretty simple kind of idea let's say here we have 2 2 2 3 and so on so i will store 2 here and then maybe 4 here 8 here 24 here and so on right product from that node till the node till the root from the node to the root right so that's what i'm storing first of all and then what i'm going to do is i'm basically going to um store that in a separate array right so let's call that array a is being taken b is being taken let's call it uh, k right so i have a new array k and k of x equals uh, a of root till x the product of everything so basically the product of everything modulo c right so that's what i'm i have stored in kx right till root till x all the products now what will any path look like any paths will be uh, let's say if i talk about this path so this path is nothing but uh, let's take another path actually uh, this path okay so this path is nothing but uh, this path multiplied by this path multiplied by the inverse of this path okay in uh, and if you do that in fact the inverse of this path twice and then this single vertex once okay you getting my point right in this you have all four of these vertex in this you have all three of these vertices and then these two are done twice so you do the inverse of this you multiply it uh, two times right so you multiply the inverse two times and then you get um then you get this thing just just these nodes are left so this is not taken so you multiply it once and then you get this path right so in this way we can get all the paths so yeah so basically that, that's how we can get it like kx multiplied by ky if we want the path from x till y and then we will multiply it with the inverse of k uh, lca and then we will multiply it with uh, uh, square and then we will multiply it with klc okay so it's a bit um, it's a bit messy but this value should be equal to d right so basically if we know the lca then this is constant this is constant this is constant right so we do not care we do not really care about all that right so we just it's just like kx multiplied by ky should just be equal to a constant right this constant will be defined for each node it, it is defined by the lc right if we are here we know this constant we can we can work it out right not a big deal so now 
let's say we have a stack kind of thing okay so in stack what happens is that all of the values from this uh, subtree will be present in one set right so in one let's say in one map we have all these values map of frequency so we have map of int comma int we have like a map of frequency so so we have a map for this uh, entire subtree and it stores for each value how many times it occurs in this subtree and then we have a map for this subtree as well and if there were more subtrees we will have a map for each of these subtrees and the map is storing the frequency of that right so the frequency of each element in that so we are actually storing the frequency of k's like frequency of each value from the k k x k like that like that right so basically we have this thing we have this result that uh, k x multiplied by k y should be equal to constant this some constant right so we will multiply with the inverse of k y on both sides and this this gives us the relation k x should be equal to some constant multiplied by the inverse of k y right so basically we get this relation so what i will do is let's say i have um let's say i have these two sets this one set and this another set because as i said for each subtree we will have a set so what what i will do is i will take the smaller set out of these two this is the small to large technique so i will take the smaller set and i will iterate on the elements of the smaller set and uh, whenever i go to any of the elements i will find this thing inverse of ky i can store it already so i can get it in over of one time i can multiply it with that constant that is fixed for this node and i get this value now all i want to do is i want to find this thing inside this map of frequency so let's say this value comes out to be 250 so i just need to find 250 in this map and how many ever times this uh, 250 is present in that map that many paths i will be having for uh, that has the value equal to d so basically that's what we want to do and uh, then what we will do is we will merge these two sets against multi large basically put everything from this smaller set into the bigger set and in this way the uh, and then we will do it for each subtree we will have like a merged subset of all the previous subtrees like a merged map of all the previous subtrees and the current map uh, and the current set or map whatever and then one by one for each element we will check how many times it is there so some something like that we will do and we will keep merging everything and then we will keep we will merge the parent as well so since all of the set merging and all of the iteration of the sets is happening only uh, small to large like we we always iterate on the smaller set instead of the larger this gives us only an additional log in factor right so this is this is basically the small to large technique or the dsu entry or stack technique you can read about it i'll put it i'll put the link in the description uh, but yeah that's the main idea um it it is kind of like when you transfer an element from a smaller set to the bigger set what happens is that the size gets at least doubled so it cannot happen more than log n times because every time the size is getting doubled so after log n steps the size of the set will become n and nothing else can be brought into it or like this this won't go anywhere else something like that yeah so that's why this works in i think n log square n right so the total time complexity of the solution will be o of n log square n and it's n log square n because this log n factor is due to the stack and then the map that you're keeping will give you x another log n and yeah so that's n log square n so this was the fifth problem again easily 2100 difficulty but yeah a bit standard kind of problem so finally let's talk about the sixth problem because that's the last problem and this is also a bit yeah so this was actually very hard it took me at least 20 25 minutes to think about it right so it was very hard um but a bit standard i guess like it has already appeared in a contest before this this contest it has already appeared in some gym contest 2017 Mm, some contest it has appeared already but yeah so in this problem we are given um two arrays array a and array b and we can perform operations like we can uh, 
um, take some value any non negative value we can um, add add it to some uh, some index and subtract it from some other index right so we can do something like that and we want to make all the elements equal to b so this is actually like the split wise problem like i mean this is the problem that the split wise has to solve basically so it's like uh, let's say there are some friends and uh, some values are there okay and then th there there are some target values 8 7 3 5 1 maybe something like that so what you want to do is you can shift these values from here to here like maybe you can give some of its amount to this then it can give some of uh, amount to this and so on so finally we want to make these values equal to these values i think in this case it's not possible so when is it not possible when the total sum of this is not equal to the total sum of this right then like you cannot increase or decrease the value right so normally in, in these questions the first thing i do is i subtract the final array from the initial array and then we will get some values like uh we get minus 6 minus 2 Zero, minus one, zero, and so on. Right. So now the question is like, we want to make all of them zero, and obviously the total sum must be zero. So the sum must be zero, otherwise it is impossible. So we want, uh, we sh we should have the sum of these elements zero. So obviously it's not zero here. So I'll take another example. So let's say it's like five zero three, sorry minus three, and then minus one minus one. Right. so something like this you can see that um this is like uh, the total sum is uh, zero so it's fine okay now what can we do in this problem okay so what can we do in this problem how can we solve this so basically this entire thing the like if we didn't have to minimize the moves it would be like just take the positives on one side and take the negatives on one side and keep transferring uh, the entire amount to this and like it's like five and then all the negatives on one side we are putting so we can give it like naively just give the one to this and give the one to this give the three to this and so on but it will take more operations than optimal solution right so how do we find the optimal solution so in the optimal solution what we can notice is that when is when is the like when is there a problem so i'll, I'll give you an example when there is a problem so let's say this was 6 right and uh, this was let's say 2 okay and we have uh, the more values let's say this is uh, let's say we have another 2 and we have a uh, minus 2 also okay mm right okay so now the problem is let's say we take the positives on one side 6 and 2 and we take the negatives on the other side minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 and minus 2 okay so one way to do is just pair this 2 with this minus 2 Okay, so that is one transaction, and then three more transactions. Okay, and you're done. In in four transactions, you're done. But the problem arises when let's say you give two to this and you give two to this. Okay. Now here we have two remaining. Here we have two remaining and minus three minus one. Okay. The next thing what you will have to do is you will have to do uh, one transaction here. One transaction here. So this will be minus one, this will be zero, and then you have to do two transactions: one to this, one to this. So instead of four, you have five transactions, right? So, so yeah, you can see that's how, like that's what the problem is. And luckily, this uh, this a the size of the array a is very small. That's why uh, you can do it is it is twenty, so you can do exponential algorithms. Like you can do two to the power twenty easily. Okay, so, yeah. So basically. the intuition i'm not sure if i can help you get the intuition exactly but if we can make smaller groups of this it will be more advantageous like if we can make smaller groups with value with the total value zero then that's better right so we want to make multiple disjoint groups so that each of them has the value zero each of them has the total sum zero 
like one set can be this it is a subset this has the total value 0 this also this also has the value 0 and this also has the value 0 so we managed to divide this entire thing into three parts and basically that's all we have to do we have to divide it into the maximum number of parts and if we can do that then uh, then we're done right so we have to divide it into the most number of parts and yeah so that's what we have to do we have to divide it into most number of parts because in each part there will be just uh, like if there are x elements uh, in in a, in a subset we can do it in x minus one steps because uh, we can obviously do it in x minus one steps right because let's say there, there are four elements here we can do it in one two and three right so this is like a tree kind of thing there are we, like, we don't need to have any cycles we are totally eliminating one element in one step so we can see that obviously last step will eliminate everything so one set of size x can be done in x minus one moves so the more number of subsets we can make the better it is okay so we want to make the most number of subsets how do we do that first i'll tell you the 3 to power n solution the 3 to power n solution is that you consider a bit mask of this okay And let's try to do something like dp of uh, mask is the answer for the chosen element, right? So you need to know bit mask. Uh, like if everything is one, that means the entire array, and that's that's the answer that you want. So for this, what you can do is you can choose a smaller subset. Okay, so you can choose a subset of this dp mask. Let's call it uh, s, right? So I'll say s is the subset of this. So we want dp of uh, s right plus the dp of mask or s that means everything except s from the mask and we want the minimum of this oh, sorry we want the maximum of this right so we want the maximum of this thing uh, so this basically means in how many pieces can we break the subset s down and in how many pieces we can can we break the rest of the thing down right and uh, yeah so basically we want to find the max of that otherwise if uh, so so this is one case and uh, the other case is like uh, if the if this mask has the entire sum equal to 0 then there is one way to break it down otherwise there is zero way there are zero ways to break this down right so something like this we have to do and we have to iterate on all the subsets and for each of these values we have to iterate on all the subsets of that as well so when you iterate on all the masks and you iterate on on all the subsets of all the masks then the time complexity is 3 to power n right so it will be 3 to power n to do it and it won't work for uh, n equals 20 but but i have heard that in this context it was working so maybe due to weak test cases 3 to power n was working even when uh, n was 20 right so usually 3 to power n works till i guess n equals 15 maybe 16 so that that's when 3 to power n works it does not work for 20 so but uh, i've heard that in this test it worked but i'm going to tell you the full solution i'm going to tell you how to make it work even for the what is the exact solution how to do it in 2 to power n instead so in that uh, the idea is similar we have to do this only but we will do it in a more efficient way so for that we will be using a thing called the sos dp which is the sum over subsets dp okay i'll put the link in the description but i'm going to also show you this thing SOS dynamic programming. So you can uh, use something like this, this, this kind of code. Like I know, mo I know most of the people use this version, but I don't think you can get the same result using this version. You have to use this version instead. So basically, it is calculating the DP mask for each mask in the small to big order, and uh, we have the DP of mask for each mask and we are storing it in this capital F. So that's what we're doing. So basically it is storing the sum of all the subset. Right? So 
uh, it's basically going to each of the subsets and it is uh, taking the sum of all of the subsets like if we have uh, basically if we have one one zero one something like this so it it has a lot of subsets right it has a subset one one zero 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 it has a subset zero one zero one one like this right so it is calculating the sum of value of each subset so instead of getting the sum we want the maximum here so in, in this line instead of this plus we can put the max operator and we want to get the maximum of uh, the we want to get the maximum of the subsets but instead of getting the maximum like instead of combining just dp mask we have to do uh, dp mask plus dp mask or s right so something like this we have to do so basically we want to get the minimum we want to get the maximum of the sum of these two things right so this is this is very complex and uh, the this has appeared earlier in this contest and they had a little bit different solution so they are basically what they're trying to do is they're saying that the maximum number of uh, subsets it can be divided into is like for some smaller subset you try to find that value and uh, basically add one because there will be one more subset so basically what they're trying to say is like this is the entire set and you find the maximum value for a subset and if this entire thing is zero and all of these subsets are zero then this would also be zero so you just add one to that and then you find the uh, maximum value using SOSDP. So again, that was like, I don't think that was tough. So that's why I rated it 2300 plus and I still stand by that. So yeah, so uh, like I'm not very sure if I explained it very properly. So I'm going to put the link of uh, this as well. Going Dutch, you can read it from here. But yeah. So there's this going Dutch problem. It is very similar. You can read the solution from here. Uh, I think their solution is a little bit cleaner, maybe. But yeah, at the end of the day, you have to do this uh, SOS dynamic programming. You can read about this. It is a little bit tough concept. I remember I was almost orange when I was able to understand this. So for now, I guess maybe you can just copy these things, use it as a black box or do something. You, you can read it. It's not that hard, but it's not that easy as well. So, so that's that. And I think um, that's it for today. I will be doing this contest and uh, you can check the video for this on my second YouTube channel. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.